my name is Natasha, and I'm joining you from my home, which is located on Tree Six Territory and the homeland of the Métis. And I'm joining you today for a new program called Sustainability Shorts. So these are going to be short videos about sustainability, five to ten minutes long, talking about various topics. And the first one today is climate change. So this is a, a pretty special program for me because my background is in, is in sustainability. I have a master's degree in sustainable environmental management. So prior to working with the library, this is what I did. I'd study and learn about climate change, sustainability, and how the two intersect, what people can do about it. So it's pretty challenging for me to think about what I can share with you in such a short amount of time. So what I'm going to do is give you a basic definition of climate change and go over some resources that you can use to start a conversation as a family about climate change. So the first one I'm gonna show you today is this book, it's called Our Planet, and it's based off the Netflix series by the same name, Our Planet, and both the TV series and this book, which you can get at the Saskatoon Public Library, do a really great job at talk of talking about climate change and its impacts on specific species of animals and also large-scale ecozones or regions or habitats. And they it does a really good job at splitting them up, so it does frozen world, jungles, forests, and so on, and it gives a good summary of what those regions of the world do for us in terms of mitigating and regulating our climate um, and what's happening to them right now because of human actions and the impacts of climate change. So for example, it talks about the melting sea ice and how that impacts the species that live there, but also it has a big impact on regulating our global climate and the less sea ice we have, the faster climate change actually has an impact. I'm gonna to read to you from this book, the definition of climate change, since it's a good family level definition. It's very straightforward. So I'm just gonna flip to the back of the book where they have their glossary. So here under climate change, it says, a variation in the Earth's climate over a period of time. The overall average temperature of the Earth is rising. This is sometimes called global warming, which is affecting climate. Human actions such as burning fossil fuels and cutting down forests are making this happen. So I like that definition because it does a good job of pinpointing the fact that climate change is a change over time to the average temperature of the earth, as well as highlighting the fact that it's human caused. So that's a key science point for um, that this book covers and it's a good starting point for families. The other thing I wanna to do today is give you a little snapshot overview of what happened in regards to climate change in 2020 because a lot happened. Um, this has been one of the hottest years on record. I'm, I'm gonna to read to you a little bit from a report from the World Meteorological Organization, so the WMO, and they put out a preliminary report of climate change for 2020, and they're gonna be putting out their full report in March of 2021. So the article I'm reading to you today is called 2020 on track to be one of the three warmest years on record. And this was published in December, on the 2nd of December of 2020. So the reason why it says on track at that point is just because they're missing that last data set for the month of December to say definitively whether or not it was. So the key takeaways from this preliminary report are the increase in global average temperatures as of 2020. So you might recall that a lot of our various global agreements, politically speaking, have been to keep the global temperature below one degree Celsius and then it's changed to be below 1.5 degrees Celsius. Well, as of, as of December of 2020, the world was at an average temperature of 1.2 degrees Celsius. Temperatures. So that's a clear sign that we're not doing great on our targets and we're probably not gonna meet our targets. So we need to set harsher guidelines for ourselves and do a lot more to keep the warming below 1.5 degrees Celsius. It also states here that from 2011 to 2020 was the hottest decade on record, and all of the hottest years on record have been after 2015. Other things we saw this year were a lot of wildfires, you might recall. We've seen a lot of flooding and droughts and food security issues around the globe, um, and we've seen an increase in severe weather events like hurricanes. Now, when we talk about those increases in global temperature, it's important to note that these effects are felt even more strongly in the polar regions. And a particular event from 2020 was an increase above that global average temperature by five degrees Celsius in Siberia. So that's quite a huge increase. And that's a really good example of how those temperature rise, those rising temperatures are even more extreme in those polar regions. 
So those are the key takeaways. I'll send a link to that report um, in with this video. So hopefully you can look the whole thing and keep your eye out for the full published report in March of 2021. So the other thing I want to do today is actually read you a book. It's a children's book, but I feel like that's kind of underselling it. I think this is an every, every age book. And this is Our House is on Fire, and it is the Greta Thunberg's Call to Save the Planet. So it's a story about her life and what kind of got her kicked off as an environmental activ activist. And it's by Jeanette Winters. So I want to read this book because it does a really good job of highlighting those, those key events that let us know that climate change is happening now. It's not something of the future. It's something we're experiencing every day. So it does a good job of doing that. But it also does a really good job of talking about the big emotions that some people feel when they realize just how big and daunting and kind of dire things are in terms of climate change and especially for the youth of today that can be a really overwhelming thing so it's a good thing to talk about as a family so i'm going to read this book to you you are never too small to make a difference our house is on fire Greta is a quiet girl who led a quiet life in the city of Stockholm. Her dog Roxy was her friend. All my life, I've been invisible. The invisible girl in the back who doesn't say anything. In school, she felt alone. Then one day, Greta's teacher talked to the class about the climate, about how our planet is getting warmer about how the polar ice is melting, about how animals' lives are threatened, and ours too. That's when Greta's life changed. She read for hours and watched film after film about our warming world. Greta could think about one thing for a long time. She saw ice melting into the sea, disappearing. She saw mighty winds and torrential rains howling across the land. And these are all things we saw this year. She saw coral reefs deep down in the sea, pale as ghosts, bleached by the warming waters. Greta saw living creatures everywhere, struggling to stay alive. Greta saw floodwaters covering houses and people and animals. She saw cities swallowed under rising oceans. She saw the smoldering sun and scorched the earth, living, er, leaving it bone dry. She saw blazing wildfires racing through the forests. We saw those this year too. Our house is on fire. Greta became sad, thinking about the climate all the time. She barely ate or spoke. Those pictures were stuck in my mind. The sad days went on for a long time, each day more unhappy than the next. There might not be a world to live in when she grows up. What use is school without a future? What can I do, she wondered. Greta decided to go on strike from school for the climate. Her parents understood. Greta skipped school one Friday and took her poster, School Strike for Climate, to the parliament building to sit on strike. She hoped lawmakers would see her. People walked past too busy to notice. Greta was invisible there too. She was at the parliament building every Friday, even in the rain. Then word of her strike began to spread. Little by little, the other school strikers joined her. On Fridays, Stockholm schools were a bit empty. More people started noticing the child strikers and word spread through cyberspace about the Friday school strikers. 
So these are the words strike written over and over again in different languages. Children started striking everywhere. If grown-ups won't act to save the planet, children will. The quiet girl who always felt invisible was asked to speak to very important people at the United Nations climate talks in Poland. Greta only spoke when she thought it was necessary. You say you love your children above all else, and yet you are stealing their future in front of their very eyes. We need to keep the fossil fuels in the ground. The quiet girl was invited to speak to important people at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. It was necessary to speak. I don't want you to be hopeful. I want you to panic. I want you to feel the fear that I feel every day. I want you to act as if the house was on fire, because it is. Greta's protest all alone sparked a worldwide, a worldwide children's march. Her quiet voice joined by thousands of voices became a roar. Can you hear us? And here their signs say, school strike, it's my future, no more excuses. Our future is in your hand. Love your mother, our house is on fire. Denial is not a policy, you're destroying our future. Global warming is not healthy. The water is rising and so are we. What will you do? So that's a good story to talk about some of the, the feelings that kids and grown-ups can have when they're faced with the reality of climate change um, and a little bit about the environmental activism movement, especially among youth. So it's a good family starter. You can get that from the library as well. And if you're looking for a more adult, in-depth, uh, well-researched read, uh, there's also this one. It's The Uninhab Uninhabitable Earth, Life After Warming by David Wallace Wells. There's, of course, several other books you can read as well. This just happens to be one I had on hand. And you can get this through the public library's website and place a hold on it for yourself. So this one has a very in-depth discussion about what they call the Cascade, so that um, industrial revolution on period of time where warming starts to really increase due to CO2 emissions, um, and a little bit about the impacts of that, well, a lot about the impacts of that for various reasons, be it weather or um, social impacts as well. So that's a, a more of an adult read you can check out. So that's been our first sustainability video. And next time we're gonna talk more specifically about sustainability and what's, what people can do to live better for the planet. So see you next time. And hopefully you talk about this as a family.